Welcome back to The Watch List. I'm Nicole Petalides. We want to turn your attention straight over to music and who better to speak with than David Scholhoff, founder, CEO of the Music ETF. Of course, his whole life has been in music as a music executive, following the music industry closely, fresh out of the Grammys, um, Spotify raising prices again. So much to discuss here. Yeah. How's the ETF doing? How, tell me about running an, a, a music ETF. No, it's been going great, and investors seem to love it. We have about $20 million uh, in the fund. We've got anywhere from five to 15,000 shares being traded a day. And as you pointed out, we have some you know, big, big stocks in our fund right now, from Spotify to Live Nation to mm -hmm. Sphere, mm -hmm. all the content companies, Universal, uh, yeah. Warner. So yeah. live music and content and publishing, and streaming, uh, look, streaming is on fire right now. Spotify crushed earnings last quarter, the past two quarters. They're raising rates for the second time now. Um, they, you know, their revenues were up 16%. Their subscribers were up 15% in 2023 um, to 236 million paid subscribers. They have 600 million subscribers worldwide. And then behind that, you have Apple, Amazon, Google, Tencent. Uh, 80, Eighty-four percent, Nicole, if you can believe this, of all music consumption today in this country is all dominated by streaming. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And you know, it's interesting, uh, maybe you know um, Ken Leon of CFRA, he was on earlier today, and he was on to talk about Paramount and the potential deal there. But then I asked him, what else do you have buy ratings on? And he said um, he had um, he, his Netflix and Disney. But then he said, you know, I really like some of the streaming music. And I like music. Uh, he put Universal as a buy. He had Live Nation as a buy. Spotify he had a, a, as a hold. But it's interesting how that really wasn't the realm we were even discussing, and yet he branched out to say, look, I really like Live Nation and Universal. What's driving the growth of these names? Well, first of all, music continues to be the most undervalued, under-monetized of all the media stocks. And the analysts and the investors know that. Music is cheap compared to what you pay for HBO Go, for Netflix, for Hulu. So $10 or $11, and then now it's going to $12, is still half of what you pay, you know, or close to half of what you pay for a lot of these other media companies. So Spotify will, will raise rates. They will continue to raise rates. And if you know 70% of the total content costs get paid down to all the labels and publishers, that's why... Universal yesterday, Lisa Yang, the top music analyst for Goldman Sachs, put a strong buy on Universal because all that uh -huh. revenue is now passing down to all the labels and all the publishers, and that money goes down to all the artists and all the songwriters and all the producers. So the whole ecosystem is growing, streaming is growing, the money passes down to the labels, and uh, and then live music is like its own animal. People just love live shows. Sphere is incredible. You yeah, know, in Vegas, right? And isn't there another one being built too? There's one build, being built in the UK. These are two billion right. dollar structures. Right. They're really massive. They're very immersive. You know, you had U2 at Sphere, and now you've got Dead and Co with John Mayer. Look, you cannot replace a live music experience. Last year was like indicative of how incredible live music is mm -hmm. uh, with the, with the Eras Tour, the Renaissance Tour. And then, you know, live music, if you look at their last quarter, they reported revenues up 25% across ticketing and sponsorship. And they just doubled yeah. their output for shows for 2024. So, and the ticket prices are just insane right now. $1,300, $1,400 for a Taylor Swift ticket, $700 for a Morgan Wallen ticket. So, uh, you know, the industry today is just on fire. And, um, you know, and live music is just driving so much of music today. I know about half the names that you're mentioning. <laughs> you know, you mentioned one and then I don't know it. And then you mentioned one I know and then one I don't know. Um, you know, Spotify raising rates for a second time this year. Where does that fit in? Is that okay? Is that going to bring more money to Spotify? Will they lose subscribers or that's okay? Because no, they actually, want to hear it. yeah, they thought about that. They, their subscribers actually grew. So the subscribers grew by 15% last year. Right. So, you know, there's no indication People that... People are willing to pay. There's no attrition. People are willing to pay. Not only that, they actually have two, maybe three mm -hmm. music services. Because remember, yeah. between Apple and Amazon, they have different curations. So, uh, but Spotify's clearly the leader. They're also, by the way, not just in audio. They're in podcasts. They're in audio books. They signed a huge deal with Joe Rogan. Uh, they've got, you know, a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're right. very much in the media business as much as they are in the music business. You said paid streaming subscribers expected to hit 1.2 billion by 2030. So no slowing down in this industry. When you think about what's in the ETF, I mean, tell us about 
because I think about Beyonce and Taylor Swift and a lot of exciting names that we're watching, but um, and some of the names we know better than others. Tell me uh, some of the other names that are in the ETF. Yeah, well, you mentioned yeah. a few. Yeah, so first of all, just look internationally. 60% of our fund are actually a, about a lot of music companies you haven't really heard of before. We have Hyde, oh. JYP, SM Entertainment, YG+. <laughs> We have, these are the biggest content companies in South Korea. We have Genie ah. Corp and Kakao. Those are the two biggest streaming companies. Ah. So those, those are the Spotify counterparts in South Korea. We have him in Taiwan. We have Avex in Japan. We have Cloud Music in China. We have Tencent. We have Believe in France. We have CTS Eventum, the biggest live music and ticketing company in Germany. We're giving investors total global exposure to the music industry yeah. and a lot of these companies are really hard to trade you can't you can't access them you have to you know set up local accounts so we make this very easy and convenient for investors to invest in the in the music industry what about some of the names like sony music apple music amazon people so, know some of those so here's how the thing. are they doing and so those companies are doing great well apple had a, had a bit of a rough quarter but amazon's doing great uh, and, uh, and Google's doing great. But the reason why they're in the fund, and those names are capped at 7%, by the way, Apple, Amazon, and Google, I see. because you know, they're still top streaming companies. So all right. the companies in our fund generate more than 50% of the revenues from music. But if they're a top player in streaming or content or live music events and ticketing, they're going to be in there. So Apple, Amazon, and Google, you can't ignore them. They're, that's like still 300 million yeah. paid subscribers right there. So it's a big part of the ecosystem. They're included, but we've capped their weights on our fund. And there's no short of artists. I mean, every time, you know, we say, oh, that one, a great one died or, you know, another great one comes. Um, when we think about how things are evolving, I think about AI and where does AI fit into music? Part of the issue was the concerns about AI. Is AI going to help this group at all? Yeah, look, AI and blockchain, there are a lot of benefits and there are a lot of risks. You know, you mentioned these artists yesterday, there was a advocacy task force, 200 of them came together and are really, you know, supporting, you know, laws against AI. You know, it's infringing. You have deep fakes. You have a lot of streaming fraud. The big issue, yeah. Nicole, is that there's no federal copyright protection in your voice today in this country. Local, the states actually have local acts like Nat, like Tennessee and, uh, just just enacted the Elvis Act, making it a crime to actually lift someone's voice and publish that without their consent. You have name, image, and well, likeness they're rights. they're the first ones to really do that. I don't think I've heard that anywhere else. And, and it's going to follow. But Congress needs to act because what's happening is you have artists are being mimicked and ripped off, and they're, mm -hmm. and that's one, one of the big problems with TikTok is that you have a lot of deep fakes that are going up, and you don't know who they are. And you have all these pirates that are profiting. So all the artists have a right to be concerned. There are a lot of benefits like sampling and production. And look, if you use ChatGBT, you can create some beautiful lyrics. If you yeah. use OpenAI, you can create some beautiful music. But there needs to be consent and there needs to be compensation with all the artists if their voices are being used. It is simply immoral and illegal to be lifting yeah. an artist's voice and, and creating a fake track with that. Yeah, Taylor Swift now in the Forbes uh, billionaire. Yeah, she's list, crushing it. Right? I mean, it was interesting because somewhere I saw that said like how fast she's gotten there. I'm like, it's not fast. She's 30 and she's been performing since she's 12 or something. It's not so fast. I mean, she's been an incredible businesswoman and her heiress tour did so incredibly well also. Does that help any of the names that we've discussed here? Absolutely. And so when you look at our fund, if you pick any artist, we have their ecosystem in the fund. So Taylor's a good example. She signed to Republic Records. Uh, Republic Records is owned by Universal Music Group. She has a deal with Live Nation. So you're participating across the spectrum with her in merchandising mm -hmm. and publishing and live music events and ticketing. Yeah. And that's what we're doing with MUSQ. We're, we're democratizing the opportunity for fans to own pieces of the industry and own right. pieces of the artists because for a long time fans really couldn't invest in music. They didn't know how. There weren't enough companies first of all and then you had to be an LP at one of these big firms like Blackstone or KKR or Apollo. You had to show net yeah. worth of five million dollars. That's not fair to like you know a college kid that may want to own music or you know even a family office that doesn't want to put money in a big private equity fund. So we're really creating an opportunity around yeah. the world for investors to invest broadly across music. Yeah Spotify and Announcing Beyonce's uh, Cowboy is the number one streaming ever, right? I mean, it, it's amazing how we just continue to break records and there's more room for more penetration. David Schulhoff, founder and CEO of the Music ETF. Thank you for being here. A lot of things to tie into there today.
Thank you so much.